And a source telling the Washington Post that the person behind the massive Pentagon intel leak worked on a military base and shared the documents with a group of online friends. He's a member of that Discord group. He is not a Russian operative. He is not a Ukrainian operative. I'll go as far to say he's not even on the east side of the world. Any claims that he is a Russian operative or pro-Russian is categorically false. He is not interested in helping any foreign agencies with their attack on the U.S. or other countries. Joining us right now is Florida Congresswoman and member of the House Foreign Affairs and Small Business Committees, Maria Salazar. Congresswoman, it's good to see you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. What is the Always. impact uh, from a foreign sure. affairs perspective, the impact of this uh, leak? Well, the impact is that these things should not be happening, and we, as a member of the of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, we're going to get to the bottom of it. And uh, these type of leaks cannot be happening ever. But we also have to concentrate on what that documentation says, and specifically when it comes to my part of the world, or China, and the penetration, the Chinese penetration in Latin America is mind-boggling. And that is something that we have been saying in the House Foreign Affairs Committee, subcommittees for the Americas, that the Chinese are here not for trade, but for war. So even though we should have not leaked these documents, once they, it has happened, the information that we have read is mind-boggling. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned China uh, getting uh, infiltrating, pretty much, into Latin America. I want to point you to a headline this morning. Oh, yes. China's <laughs> foreign ministry has sanctioned U.S. House Foreign Relations Committee Chairman Michael McCall. So China doesn't really care, the Communist yes. Party, what you're saying. They just sanctioned Mike McCall over McCall uh, relations to Taiwan and the trip that you all took last week. China's Xi Jinping yes. also told his armed yes. forces yesterday to strengthen military training for, quote, actual combat following the recent drills around Taiwan. A new survey from the Pew Research Center finds 38 percent of Americans say that they view China as an enemy, while 52 percent call it a competitor. Congresswoman, what should be done in terms of the provocations out of communist China? And you know, Maria, why they are sanctioning Mike, Michael McCall, the chairman of the committee that I belong to? Because he's doing a great job. And because we are in, within the GOP conference, the Republicans in the House of Representatives, for the first time, we're saying to the world and to the country, be careful with China. China is here in my hemisphere, not for trade, but for war. And that's because Michael McCall has given me the instructions to, to uh, explain to the world what they're really doing. And let me just give you a few little details that will scare you. I'm not sure if you know that in Argentina, there is a Chinese military space station in Patagonia. That military, military, Chinese military space station has the size of 400 football fields. 400. What are they doing there? We do not know because the Argentinians cannot even go in and investigate what the Chinese are doing. Uh, President Xi Jinping has been to Latin America in the last 10 years more than President Obama, President Trump, and President Biden combined. Mm. They, have in, they are lending money to the Latin America, 30% yeah. of their lending. But the lending is, you know, very, very um, uh, uh, mysterious because they're investing in utilities, in soccer stadiums. So little by little, they're penetrating because they just want to fill the vacuum that we, the United States, have created. Yeah, no, we, I'm aware of the Chinese threat. I covered every single day and have for several years. We have Chinese Communist Party police stations in New York. So, I mean, you know, why do we need a CCP police in New York when we have our own law enforcement? So the question becomes, what are you doing about it as an elected official? Here's one question. We know that China has most favored nation status when it comes to trade. Why does the Communist Party of China get a break on trade, leaving the United States with a deficit? As an elected official, can you vote to change that? Of course, but we have to create the laws. And the, as I said and I mentioned to you, 
we as the GOP, the majority in the House of Representatives, we know that threat that you have explained to us. We know that China, it's the enemy, and we need to stop it. How do we do that? Nearshoring and creating legislation that will indicate that we are not going to give them what you just said, more favorable trade. It's time to decouple, which is not the fancy word right now, decouple and bring all that industry back to this hemisphere, whether it's Canada, Mexico, or Argentina. Argentina, mm -hmm. or go to the friendly countries, Europe, Asia. But it's time, because you know, I'm Cuban American. I represent this beautiful city of Miami, the heart of the Cuban exile community. We know that communism doesn't bring anything good. Yeah, and but, the Chinese are communists. But, you know, corporate America seems to be funding the expansion of the CCP, investing in all these companies that are tied to the CCP so, uh, military. So, I mean, is there a, a movement within the Foreign Affairs Committee to, to start making that investment off limits? Why are all these Chinese companies in our indexes? Why are Chinese companies listed on the New York Stock Exchange that don't follow the audit rules that American companies do? There's so many issues here. There are companies that are Chinese companies that are on the sanction list. Why? And why are Americans unwittingly investing in them, in, in, in effect, funding the expansion of the CCP? Will you stop it? Of course, and I am the number one advocate for what you just said, and I am sure that Michael McCall, we are preparing legislation to whack the Chinese, because that is what they deserve. Like I said, they're not here for trade, they're here for war. Look what they're doing with Taiwan. They're just sending signals that Taiwan is next. Why? Because we don't have leadership, strong leadership in the White House. Yeah. Unfortunately, this has nothing to do with political parties, nothing. This has to do with American interests. Yeah. And the American interests right now are in danger, and we understand very well the threat that you just explained. Well, it's That's why I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sending the messages that in Latin America, in my region, things are not going well for, for the American interests. It certainly feels like dangerous times right now, Congresswoman. We're going to be watching your work. Thanks very much. Maria yes. Salazar joining us this morning in Thanks Florida. Thanks to you for the opportunity, Maria. Good to see you.